Hello friends, welcome to this end-to-end -end episode of Data Engineering focusing on Data Build Tool, popularly known as DBT. The DBT is an open source framework that enables data analysts and data engineers to transform raw data into structured, clean data sets using SQL. In addition, it allows users to version control their transformation code, automate testing and promote data dependencies. With DBT, you can build modular reusable data models and run them within a data warehouse, ensuring reliable and consistent data pipelines. In this episode, we're going to connect to source data in SharePoint folder using Dataflow Gen 2, clean and transform the data and load the data into Fabric Warehouse we're going to create. Then we'll configure DBT Cloud to Fabric, create development and production environments, Git repository, build DBT model and write it back as a view to Fabric Warehouse. And then we're going to materialize the view as a table in the DBT Cloud and finally commit the code to Git repo. So let's get started. First, I'm going to show you the source data that I'm going to be working with, which we're going to transform in the Power Query Online and then load into our Fabric Warehouse. And then we're going to create our DBT and other things. So we have this SQL Sys table that contains three worksheets, the customer table, the product table, and then the sales. So for the customer table, we have the customer ID, first name, last name, email, city, country. And then for the product, we have the product ID, product name, category, price, and then for the sales, which is going to be our fact table we have the sales id sales date customer id product id and then the quantity so we're going to go ahead and create our data flow gentle in our app.powerbi.com so i'm going to come to this data factory tab and then i've got this data engineering dbt workspace with no item so i'm going to click on new first i'm going to create a warehouse so click on warehouse and i'm going to call it on sales dbt and then click on create so this will be created now because of time i'm not going to create individual tables for the three tables we're going to allow the data flow gentle to do the table creation in our warehouse so i'm going to come quickly to the data engineering and then i can create a data flow gentle and then in the data flow gentle the power query online we want to connect to the data in the sharepoint folder so click on get data then the more option at the bottom and then search for sharepoint folder and then for the site url i'm going to come to this excel file and copy everything from this point to the left ctrl c and then come back to the data flow ctrl v and i'm going to scroll to the left and delete some part of the url so there we go can you see what i'm selecting delete so this is the site url so for the connection credentials i can edit and in this case we're going to use the organization account as the authentication card so click on next and then we can see the preview of the shipment folder so click on create and this is going to load all the data in the shipment folder into the power query and then we can start filtering based on the specific data we need so we will actually filter this name to only see the sql sales table so i can click on this filter and then i want to filter the text that contains sql so i'm going to type in sql in all caps so we're going to have two files so i loaded this file twice so i'm going to come to either the date modified or created and uncheck one of them out so we're basically need one of the data so we have the single sql sales table so i'm going to come to the content i'm going to right click and then remove the other columns because we don't need them again and i'm going to go ahead and extract the content in this binary as an excel file so click on add column tab and then click on custom column and then we'll write the m code excel dot workbook function the m function and then double click and then click on ok and then we're going to say the property column within the binary excel file so i'm going to click on this open space and we're going to see the information such as the name data item kind and so on so i'm going to click on this expandable icon and i want to filter to only see the name and the data click ok Okay, so I can see the customer table, the product table, the sales, and then we have all of these filter database dot excel nm. So I'm going to click on this filter and then uncheck the first tree at the top. 
and then click OK because we are interested in the customer sales and product table. So this has been sorted. Now I'm going to come to this query because we want to actually transform these customer products and the sales individually. So I'm going to create a duplicate of this query twice. So another duplicate and then we're going to name this as customer and then press enter and for the second one i'm going to name this as product so this is going to be my beam product and then for the third one i'm going to call this one sales now so i can come to the first one in no specific order and then i want to uncheck the product and then the sales click ok and i can hold down the shift key and I click on content right click and then remove columns so they are not needed so when i click on this open space i can see the content of the customer table as the customer id first name last name to country which is cool now we're going to logically append all of these to do that i'm going to use the table dot combine function so table dot combine function and then open the bracket and i'm going to come here and open a square bracket and pass in this date data the column name that is holding the table so close the bracket and then hit enter and there we go so we have this logically as a column so i'm going to promote the first row as headers so click on this table icon and then use first row as headers and then the power query automatically apply the default or the automatic data types to transform this data for me which is absolutely fantastic so i've got the customer id first name to country so this has been sorted i'm going to come to the product and then do the same thing i'm going to click on this filter or check the customer and the sales and click ok and then hold down the shift key click on the content column right click remove columns and then i'm going to come to the formula bar table dot combine function open the bracket and i'm going to come here open the square bracket type in data that is holding the table press enter and there we go so we have the product again we're going to quickly use first row as headers so use first row as headers and we have the product table transformed and accessible in the power query and finally for now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the sales table so let me just wait so click on the sales and then uncheck the customer and the product and then click OK. So again, we're going to hold down the shift key or the control key, right click, remove columns, and then we're going to come to the formula bar in the formula bar table dot combine M function and then come here, open the square bracket, type in data, close the bracket, press enter, and we're going to have the sales. Now in the sales, I'm going to come so okay, let me just quickly promote the first row as headers and then we'll get rid of this column six and seven which are not part of the data so click on this column hold down the shift key or the control key click on the column seven right click and then remove columns so we have the sales id to the quantity again let's quickly check around this is the product and this is looking good and then for the customer this is looking good so this is going to be our f sales the fact table and this is going to be our d product so i'm going to quickly name this d product and then i can double click on the customer and do the same thing here d customer so oops the customer okay so we can go on and add these to our newly created sales dbt fabric warehouse to do that, I'm going to come to the home tab. In the home tab, I can see under the query, we have add data destination. Click on that and I'm going to choose the warehouse. So for the warehouse, this is picked up automatically. Click on next. And in the next, I'm going to select the warehouse that we created. And then I'm going to allow the Power Query Online, the data flow digital to create the table in our destination warehouse without me doing all of that. So I can see this is going to create a new table. Click on the sales DBT and I can see the name of the table. Click on X and then we're going to provide the destination settings so this is fine click on save settings and then we can see the add data destination for this d customer table is blanked out so i'm going to come to the deploy and then click on the add data destination warehouse click on next and i'm going to choose the name of the warehouse sales dbt and then click on next 
and then save settings and i'm going to repeat the same thing for the f sales so click on the f sales and then add data to our warehouse click on the next and then i'm going to choose the name of the warehouse sales dvt click on next and then click on save settings now we have the three tables provisioned to be ingested into the fabric warehouse so i'm going to come here at the bottom click on publish now i'm going to come to the data flow one and click on this ellipsis to check the status of our data integration into the fabric warehouse so i'm going to click on refresh history and i'm going to see the status as succeeded so this is wonderful and i'm going to go to the sales dbt warehouse to confirm the three tables there we go so we can see the d customer table the d product and then the f sales table let me just wait for this to deploy there we go so we have thousands of records in this f sales and then the d product and then we have the customer so this is working absolutely fine so we will go to the dbt cloud platform because our goal is to perform data transformation using the data build to dbt so i'm going to come here and first you need to actually um, create your account if you don't have any account now to create your account just go to cloud.getdbt.com and this is going to prompt you to sign up below the login and then you're going to provide your email address your name and other credentials and then you need to authenticate your account after you fully authenticate your account you're going to actually see this platform so this is the dbt cloud platform now everything is done in the cloud so we don't need to um use either vs code or it's not actually our phone everything is actually in the cloud and that's why i love the dbt cloud that uses the vs code for the same project so i'm going to go ahead and create our new project now if you're doing this for the first time you probably gonna probably have this uh analytics project name created for you but i'm going to do all of that I'm going to go ahead and provide the name for my project. So I'm going to come to this project name and I'm going to call this one data engineering. And then once you provide the name, you can go ahead and click on continue. And you can see we have this green check mark. So you can actually modify the name of the project. Now, as soon as you click on continue, we're going to have this dashboard develop, deploy, and explore tabs. So that is fine. Now we can go on and configure our development environment. Now, the development environment is an isolated workspace where we can build, test, and validate data models without affecting the production environment in any way. So for the connection credentials, I'm going to click on this connection and then I'm going to choose a new connection and it's going to open in a separate tab and I can go ahead and choose one of the adapters like the Snowflake, we have the Postgres, SQL, the BigQuery, Redshift, Databricks, Apache Spark, Starburst, Synapse Analytics, Fabric and then we have the latest one, the Athena as part of the AWS service. So I'm going to choose for this demo Fabric and I can see the name here. Again, I can modify this name if I choose to and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to provide the settings such as the name of the server and then the server is going to be listening at port 1433 and I'm going to provide the name of the database. So for the name of the server, I'm going to quickly come to my Fabric. Now in the Fabric where my warehouse is created, I'm going to click on this gear icon and then I'm going to copy the SQL connection string. That is the server I'm looking for. And then go back to the DBT cloud and control V to paste. And then I'm going to provide the name of the database. Now the name of the database is the name here. So control C and then control V to paste. And I'm going to scroll down and then for the optional settings such as retries open failure login timeout query timeout this optional information so scroll up and then click on save settings so i'm going to save that and as soon as i save that i can come back to the connections and confirm so we have the fabric board we don't have the development environment yet no problems now i'm going to come to project now in the project I'm going to click on data engineering and i'm going to see the detail the overview such as the project name the description the repository the development connection and so on and so forth now for the repo i'm going to go ahead and create in my github a repo so this is my github and i'm going to click on this name and then click on your repositories and then i'm going to create the new one and i'm going to call this one dbt engineering and then once i'm done with the name I can scroll down now i can 
initialize this with a readme file and of course this is going to be public you can also use private private it doesn't matter so i'm going to use public and i'm not going to initialize this with a readme file so scroll down and then click on create repository so this repository has been created and i'm going to come back to my uh, dpt cloud now in the dpt cloud i'm going to click on configure repo so as soon as i click on that i'm going to see data engineering the name of the project and then i'm going to add my repo from either the manage or the git clone or github or gitlab so i'm using the github so click on the github and then i can create connection to my github account click on connect github account again click on that and as soon as i click on that this is going to ask me to do that again i'm expecting another tab so now we're going to say install dbt now we need to install the dbt cloud on top of the specific repo that we created so by default we're going to say install on your personal account blah 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 and then we have all repo but we want to choose only the one we created so which is this um, dbt engineering so i'm going to just only select repository and then select and i'm going to search for dbt engineering so let me just move that a little bit so that i can say okay there we go so i'm going to choose this and as soon as i click on that i'm going to scroll down and then install the dbt cloud on top of the repository which is really important for fashion control and then for other things okay so complete project setup okay so again i'm going to choose the connection now this can be so confusing you know if you're probably new to this platform but no worries i'm going to sort everything out click on the same fabric and I'm going to scroll down. As soon as I scroll down, I'm going to see the development credentials required. So we have to enter the personal development credentials here. So in this case, I can use the Active Directory password known as the Entry ID now. And I can even use the Service Principal. Now, I tried this Active Directory, but it never worked. So I'm going to use the Service Principal. Now, for the Service Principal, this requires me to create my Entry ID, the app registration, create my secret and credentials and so on and so forth let me quickly take you to my portal.azure.com and this is my azure i'm going to set for enter id known as the active directory in the past azure active directory add and i'm going to come to my app registrations and i'm going to say i've got this new app registration created and then when i click on that i can see i've generated uh, my certificate and secret which i'm going to probably use later on and of course this is assigned to a role in my entry id so i'm going to go ahead and provide the information first we need to provide the tenant id now to get tenant id i'm going to come back here go back to the overview in the overview we can see we have the directory that is the tenant id so i'm going to copy this and then go back to the dbt cloud control v and then for the client id so the client id is the same thing it's always the same thing for your tenant so this is the application client id copy that and then i'm going to control v and then we also need the client secret now the client secret is generated in the certificates and secrets so i'm going to click up there i can create another one but i'm going to use the one i created and then delete after this video so i'm going to come to my notebook and um, i can see my secret key service principal secret key still the same thing and then come back to the cloud dbt Control V and I'm going to scroll down and for the schema. Now this is going to be created automatically in my fabric warehouse and this is where the view of the SQL transcription that's going to be stored. So I can leave this, I can even use whatever I like, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to scroll down and it is important to establish connection to your fabric warehouse using the service principle we just specified. So click on this connection. Now this wouldn't work and I'm going to tell you why. So that you can see how to fix this problem okay so you can see it's not working it's error and then we can see um, dbt was unable to connect to the specific specified database blah, blah blah now this is because the service principal is not being accessible in the um, workspace we created so it is important to go back to the workspace itself not the warehouse now but the workspace i'm going to go back to this data engineering dbt workspace and i'm going to come to manage access in the manage access i'm going to add people or group and i'm going to search for the new that is the service principal um, i just refer to so new app reg and then i'm going to make this as a contributor so it is really important to make this as a contributor and then click on add so this service principal is now being connected to workspace and again it is important before you do this anyway you need to also come to the settings and then come to the admin portal in admin portal i'm going to search for service 
uh, principal service principal can use fabric apis so please make sure this is enabled okay so as soon as you enable this and then you can come back to the workspace i talked about come back to this manage access and then add the service principal so this is really important so this has been specified and i'm going to come back here and then test the connection again and this will work so let's see the results so testing connection and this should give us complete absolutely fantastic click on save and this has been sorted and i can see we have the configure your development environment and then we can go on again and specify the setup of the git repo so again i'm going to choose git and i can see dbt engineering here click on that to select and as soon as i select that we're going to see your project is ready start developing in the independent development environment now you can use the vs um, code to do this but i actually love this dbt cloud because everything is under in the cloud without having to install anything like the dbt extension or the python and so on and so forth so this is absolutely fine for me so i'm going to quickly come back here and then go back to this profile now it is really important to check this connection and then we're going to see one this is fine so click on that and then when i scroll down we're going to see we have the dev environment which is really important now we also need to create a production environment which is basically the live stable workspace where validated data models we are going to create will be executed and deployed for business critical operations and reporting so i'm going to scroll up and to do that i'm going to come to deploy and in deploy click on environment and then in the environment i'm going to be prompted to create a new environment so we can see the dev and they want to create the production deployed so click on that and again i can stick with this name of the environment and then this is going to pick up automatically production and i don't need to worry about anything scroll down and then i'm going to use the same fabric connection for the dev so again click on that and again i'm going to provide the same information for the service principal deployment credentials now so scroll down and then for the tenant id let me go back to my service principal overview okay and then i'm going to copy the tenant id and then tab Control V and I can scroll down. So for the schema, let me just call this one uh, DBO. Okay, and then go ahead and click on test connection. Again, this will return a successful connection to the um, fabric warehouse. So click um, and scroll up and then click on save. So we have the deployment. We can see we have the type as deployment, and then we've created which is something as production, and then we have the development created. So I'm going to come back here again and check it out. So come to your profile and then go to the um, project, and then we want to just make sure everything is fine. Click on this name of the project, and then we can see we have the Git, and then we have the de development connection specified. That is fine. And I'm going to go to the, um, the connection again, and we're going to have two. So this simply means we're going to have the um, the development, and then we have the production. So this is really important. And I'm going to come to my personal profile. In the personal profile, this is where our GitHub is linked. So I can see the name of my Git, GitHub, and then I can see the configure integration, blah, blah, blah. So then I'm just click on that to show you what I'm talking about. You can see we have the DBT Cloud installed on my um born to be great one um, repository that we created for this project um which is this um dbt engineering so this has now been sorted now we can go ahead and start uh developing so i'm going to click on develop and then we can use the cloud ide or we can configure cloud um, command line CLR. So I'm going to use the IDE, the independent development environment, click on that, and it's going to open the environment for me to start developing, start building my models, and then we can begin to write them into our fabric warehouse. We're going to have this view. I'm just waiting for this um, to finish off. So we can see we have the main branch of our GitHub, that is this um, DB engineering and I can close this for now. This is not needed and I'm going to come back here. Now it is important we initialize the DBT project. So click on initialize DBT project and as soon as I click on that, we're going to have all of these. We have this dot git key dot git key blah blah my first dbt model dot sql and so on and then we have the file explorer that is unique to the dbt platform itself we have the dbt engineering the name of the project and then we have the analysis macros models and in the models we create our model that is using the cte sql query and then we have the seed and so on and so forth this is fine so i'm going to go ahead and click on create new file 
Now, in the create new file, I can see I can begin to write my code. Now, do let me quickly come back here. Let me move this here and let's go back to the warehouse. Okay. Now, don't forget we have the D customer, D product, and the F sales. So let me quickly check them out. I'm going to search for or select all the rows, select star from F sales. Now, when I put in a semicolon now and I try to run this, let me just run it. Now, this is going to throw an error. So dbt cloud doesn't require you to use the semicolon okay please don't do that okay it's not required here so delete that and then run this again and then control enter to commit and then we're going to see all the record in the f sales table and which is absolutely um fantastic there we go okay let's also check the d customer just want to be sure so i'm going to type in the customer and then i can run this control enter so we should be able to see all the columns. So there we go. We have the customer ID, first name, last name, email, city, country. So let's also see the D products. The tree, the last table, and then I can select all of these. Control enter. Okay, so we have the product ID, product name, country, the category, and the price. So we are able to successfully establish connection to our fabric warehouse in the dbt cloud which is absolutely amazing now in the dbt cloud we're going to go ahead and create our model quickly and in the model of course we have to use the cte the common table expression to do all of this i'm going to go ahead and create my dbt model now to do that it's important that we come to the model and then we can right click and then create a file provide the name dot sql and then create our model and after we create the model we can save and then we can issue the dbt run command so let's see what to say total sales by product and category i can write the cte the common table expression query to do that because the dbt only accepts the cte so i'm going to go ahead and provide the weight keyword and then i can go ahead and provide the name i'm going to call this one total sales by product and category and then ask and i can open the bracket and go ahead and provide my select so first i want to select the product name select product underscore name and then comma and then i want to select the customer and the category category that's come from the same and let's just indent this to make all of this readable and i'm going to go ahead and indent this and i'm going to put in a comma now we will go ahead and perform our aggregation the sum function so open the bracket and i'm going to take the quantity column now the quantity is coming from the f sales multiplied by the price that's coming from the d product and i'm going to alias as total sales and what about let's say we also want to do maybe the average i'm going to put in a comma here and i'm going to just quickly copy all of these ctrl c and then ctrl v and i can get rid of these and type in the avg as average function and i'm going to call this one avg sales and let's want to also do count so i can use the count function here count and i can call this one count of sales okay and i can get rid of this and i can go ahead and provide the name of the table so from so we want to select from the d product table so d product table and then we can use the join which is the inner join by default so let me just make this to be easier inner join and i want to inner join the f sales table so f sales table now at this juncture i'm going to alias this f sales as the as s and i'm going to alias this as p okay so i can use the aliases in this select so this is going to be p dot product name and this is going to be also uh, p dot category because they're coming from the same table and this is going to be s dot quantity and this is going to be p dot price and again i'm going to repeat the same thing s dot quantity and then p dot price and do the same thing here s dot quantity and then p dot price so let me just call this one um sales by product category let's get rid of this total so now we have the aliases um specified and then i can use the on keyword so on so i'm going to say where the p dot product id is equal to s dot product id so we're actually linking the rows where the product id in the product table matches with the product id in the f sales table so underscore 
um, ID. And then we can go ahead and use the group by clause. So we want to group by the columns we selected. So I'm going to just copy this because of time and control V. Okay. So we have the product name and then the category. Get rid of this and I can close um, the CTE. Okay. Let me just move that down a little bit. So let me move this down. Okay. I can get rid of this. Okay. So we can go ahead and select. So select star from this sales by product category. Let me just copy this. Okay, so I can go ahead and run this just to check it out whether this is correct or not. Control enter. Let's see the result. Okay, absolutely fantastic. Our city is, is working. So we have the product name, the category, total sales, average sales, count of sales, which is absolutely cool. So now I can move this down a little bit and then I can copy this um, code or I can cut. I'm going to control X to cut and then I'm going to go ahead and create my model. Now in DBT, a model is basically a SQL file that defines a transformation of raw data into a desired output, typically creating tables of view in the data warehouse of choice. So we we'll go ahead and create our model. I'm going to come here and I'm going to right click or I can click on this ellipsis that is a little bit inconspicuous. Click on create file. And I'm going to call this one um, sales by product. And this must end with dot SQL. So it is absolutely important to end with dot SQL. And I can click on create. So we have the model created. Now I can click on these examples. And then we have this my first DBT model.sql and then we have my second dbt now these are the default models and then this is the one we just issued the sales by product dot sql now i can come here i can see in the tab i've got that open control v and i can see this here so i can go on and run the model and then we're going to see the same results Okay, there we go. This is working absolutely fine. So this is the product category, total sales, AVG, count, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to click on save. So this is going to be saved. And of course, I can go ahead and commit and sync into the main branch, but I'm not going to focus on that today. So as soon as we've save this model we can go on at the bottom we can issue the db dot run command so i'm going to type in dbt rather not db dbt run command i can go on and press enter to run and then i'm going to see this window so this is running and all things being equal this will give us a successful transformation rating into our fabric warehouse as a view Okay, DBT run succeeded. This is absolutely cool. So we can see the status has succeeded and it took less than a minute to, you know, run successfully. And then we can see we have the all items, we have the one we created, sales by product, and then these are the default. So everything is looking good. Now I can click on this to expand and I can see the summary. So we can see it starts at this time and of three starts, SQL view, model, DBT, blah, blah. So this is the, um, the schema created for me in my warehouse. And then we can see, okay, absolutely cool. I can click on the details. Now in the details, we've got a lot of information. You can always check them out if you have time. And then when I scroll down, I'm going to see the SQL query we issued. So this is the execute, create view, blah, blah, blah. And it's going to be the name of the view. And then we have the um, CTE and then we have all our select in that query. And when I scroll, I can see everything is looking absolutely um, cool. So I can go back and collapse this. I can even click on the system logs. I can see the summary. So completed successfully, which is super important. And then we have the past tree. This simply means we have the one we created, this sales by product, and then we have this, my first DBT and my second DBT. So these are what the past simply implies. And I can see the details. So we have a lot of information. I can see if you go through it, we're going to see um, the fabric adapter that we use. Okay, you can see using fabric connection, blah, blah, blah. So this is how we can see all of that. And let's just close all of this. And then we can see we have the three pass, zero warning, no error, no skip, and nothing is running for now. So this is our job I'm looking absolutely cool. Now we can go ahead and check this out in our fabric warehouse. I'm gonna come here and then I can go on and refresh. So I'm gonna click on this ellipses and then refresh. And as soon as I refresh, 
I'm going to say dbt underscore born to be great one exactly uh, what we have here let me just move this to the summary so this is what i'm talking about okay can you see uh, dbt underscore born to be great one dot um, sales by product now so we can see the schema created now i can go on and expand the schema expand now when i click on the tables i'm going to see the my first dvt my second dvt which are the default models anyway but this has been created as a view not as a table so i'm going to go ahead and create a new sql query in my fabric warehouse new query and then i can go ahead and perform and select dot um, star from sales by product so i'm going to call this sales or i can just even drag across so sales by product so don't forget this is a view not a standard um, tables so when i run that there we go so we can see we have 55 rows and five columns so this is working our transformation is working with the dbt cloud now we're going to materialize the view as a table in the dbt cloud and then we're going to write back into our fabric warehouse now to do that i'm going to quickly come here and copy this code so we have this config and in the open and close bracket we have this materialized equal to table so i'm going to quickly copy this and then come back to my dbt cloud and i'm going to come here in my query give some space at the top Control V and then I can go on and run all of these. Control Enter and let's see the result. So there we go. So we have the same um, result and I can go ahead and save. So as soon as I save this, I can go on and issue the dbt run command. So dbt run. So press Enter to commit okay dbt run succeeded so this has not been materialized as a table so i can come back to my fabric warehouse and i can go ahead and click on this ellipsis at the top let me just refresh okay let me move up a little bit refresh the whole thing and i'm going to scroll down so let me scroll down Okay, so there we go. So we have this as a sales by product table. So when I come back to the view, this is going to be cleaned up automatically. So we can now query as a table in our warehouse. So I can go on and drag to the select star from, and then I can run the query and we have the same data, but now as a table, which is super cool. Now let's quickly come back here for the last time and I can go on and commit and sync into my main branch in my GitHub, click on commit and sync. And I'm gonna call this one data transformation. And I can go on and commit changes. I'm gonna quickly come to my GitHub and then refresh. So when I refresh, there we go. So it just came in now. The commit just came in now. And then we have the analyze. And then we have the macro. So let me quickly um, go back to the model. When I click on the model, we're going to see our model we created, the sales by product.sql. And then we have the name data transformation. And this is how we can use the DBT Cloud to perform transformation of our fabric warehouse. I trust you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, share, comment, and follow me for more data engineering because the best is yet to come. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.